about how much we spent. Thank you. We're just all the way down the hall. It's nice and cute. Thank you. So cool. I made it myself. Really? Oh my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I appreciate it. And then wherever you're more comfortable, we can chair. Okay. Well, again, really nice to meet you. I'm Dr. I'm here in the Women's Health Clinic. I'm one of the resident physicians. Um, what can we help you with today? Um, so I had an incident happen. Mm -hmm. um, I was. Ooh, I said I wasn't gonna cry. Um, I, so okay. over the last few months, I was diagnosed with pain. Yeah, they wanted to diagnose me with PTSD. Documentation of the hospital stay um, and the medication that they prescribed me. Um, but apparently, the medication that I was being prescribed. Sorry, someone folded up. That's okay. Um, Thank you for being here. Yeah, and then the other medication that they gave me. Um, here, and this was the stuff that I was taking from you guys. My mom disposed of the sleep medication. So on July 3rd, um, I had a manic episode, um, and it, I ended up not wanting to go to the VA. My mm -hmm. friends were trying to get me to go to the VA. My best friend, she was with me the whole time because she was concerned. And I was out walking around, um, and I really just wanted to go to the beach. Um, for some reason, I, and I don't really remember a lot of the stuff that I was saying, um, but it wasn't good, and she was concerned. Um, and I guess apparently one of them, between my ex and her, called and asked for an ambulance to come and pick me up um, because I wasn't willing to go on my own fruition. Um, and they specifically said, do not have the LAPD come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, of course, the LAPD came, mm -hmm. and I was trying to leave because I was so upset because um, I had been working on a project. I'm a visual artist okay. and I had been working on a project and where I was tracing my family's lineage and I had found out that my great-grandmother was sold into slavery at five and she was by blood a Native American woman from the Muscogee tribe and I served in the Navy obviously. I served for the same country that rounded my family up and killed them. And I was upset. So I went out exercising my First Amendment right. And especially when the cops came, I couldn't stop crying because I was just like, look what you've done. I served our country. And to find out 32 years of my life, not even knowing that I, I enlisted myself into a, a modern form of indigenous slavery. And I was angry and frustrated and no one was listening to me. And the cops, I guess, didn't like some of the things that I was saying. And at the point where my friend tried to stop me from leaving, they waited a minute and I, I told her, just get off me because I didn't want to be touched. And I specifically said, I, I don't want to be touched by a man um, because I had just, it was just a cascading situation where I experienced an abusive relationship earlier this year. It was just one thing after another. And I was just feeling some type of way about it. And before I knew it, the LAPD had me on the ground in handcuffs. And they so quickly threw me in the back of the ambulance and restrained me. And it was just pure hell from the time they took me into custody because they didn't restrain. One of the restraints had my arm up the whole entire time for at least about an hour. They took me down to Harbor UCLA. <sighs> And upon arrival, I was waiting there, and they took me into a mental health ward, which I thought was going to be kind of, you know, I'd seen it on television. I'd never been. Um, I'd never had a manic episode, mind you. And um, <laughs> once they took me in there, they restrained me so tightly. There was at least five people restraining me because I was giving up a fight because I was just like, why are you treating me like an animal? Why are you doing this? And I was just so angry and they strapped me down to that bed and they left me there for hours. I was screaming out because I ended up urinating and mm. and there was feces all over me because they had injected something in me, some sedative. Uh, the documents and the documents, it tells you I was on that restraint and I was asleep and I was awake, asleep, awake. They were watching me. They were watching me lay in my own excrement and they did nothing. 
and to be kept there told that I had COVID when I didn't have COVID because as soon as I left out of there, I got tested and nowhere in that documentation did it say that I had COVID, but that was their reasoning or keeping me for eight days. Eight days. Eight days. They didn't tend to my wounds for a whole entire week. My arm almost got infected. They didn't take any pictures. They didn't, there was no, nothing done. I was not Mirandized when I was put in handcuffs. I was not told why I was put in handcuffs. No one talked to me for five days until I said, everyone else is telling you this story, but are you going to ask me what happened? Are you going to ask me what I actually remember? They were taking accounts for my mother and my ex who weren't there. The one person that was there that was willing to talk. And when they released me, they released me because they knew they had effed up. Because they didn't even know I was a veteran. They didn't check any of my credentials. They didn't ask me if I had been vaccinated. Mind you, I have been. I was just so... It was just shocking. The whole entire process was just shocking. It was, it was just... <laughs> I just couldn't believe in 2022 that could happen. Navy veteran. Yeah, <laughs> you're telling me. <laughs> and that was just, he said, July 3rd? July 3rd to July 11th, I was okay. in their custody. There should be plenty of videos of it, though, but I'm not sure if they'll actually release that. <laughs> Someone needs to know what they did to me. And how, so then you were released directly home, or did my, you go anywhere? My like, mother had to home? fly in, and she took care of my daughter okay. while I was in. And my mom took custody of me, and I went home, and we quarantined me because I thought I had COVID until the following morning where I got swabbed and realized I didn't have COVID. And then that's when I was just like, what? Like, what was the last eight days? Yeah, yeah. Right. So I I had the treachery. That's all I can say. It's just a treachery. Um, But I'm I'm here to to document it. I don't know what, what I can do other than get a lawyer and move on from it um because they messed up they messed up and then they're trying to fix it with more drugs drugs was the main reason would put me in there and then they gave me more drugs as if that's supposed to help when i just needed a therapist (laughs) oh man i mean it had to happen I felt like it had to happen this way because, I mean, it's documented. Mm-hmm. It's documented there. There's videos everywhere when the patrol car pulled up, when the ambulance pulled up inside of the hospital. Like, there's no way that they don't have footage of me walking around in circles because I run to manage my stress. And I said that to the doctor. Mm-hmm. I said, mm-hmm. I, I do yoga, I meditate, I run, I do manage my stress. So I didn't understand the whole process of being there, and, she, and I, I, I never saw the exterior of that space. There was never any group activities. There was nothing. It was like being in jail. It they, left me in that room. There was feces on the walls. There was food on the TV, which was, it, it was just deplorable. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, and three out of the five people that were there were chronically homeless people. And it was just the saddest thing to know that, like, that was their life, and that's what they had to go through because they were mentally unwell. Um, and it just pained me. Um, and that's why I said I knew it had to happen that way because I saw something that most people never yeah. see. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's tragic. Yeah, yeah. 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 <sighs> it's rough. Yeah, and then I lost my hair in it because I shaved my head. Apparently that was one of the things that kind of, yeah. but it feels liberating. I don't yeah. know, I'm not too mad yeah. about it. Yeah. Got an okay shape head. Yeah, it looks cute. Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was intentional. It was cute. No, it um, totally was not. <laughs> so before you were hospitalized, how long had had you been having like symptoms of like a manic episode? Do you think like that looking back, are you able? A couple to tell? days. Okay. Like I think okay. they they said maybe it was about three days that okay. they started my my ex kind of started noticing that something was a little off, but it really hit a spearhead like on the third. Okay. Um, and that's when they were like, okay, we got to do something. Um, so 
And other stuff going on, or you think, like what you mentioned to me, doing the research and looking into the lineage was really was just, just kind of like the, like the tipping point? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was the fact that I had filed a claim to increase my, like, the payment that I was getting because it's mm-hmm. been affecting my work. Mm-hmm. I haven't been able to really keep a steady work schedule because, you know, I'm waking up some mornings and waking up feeling like crap. Like, I just, like, you know... Mm-hmm. Um, and that's been going on since February 1st, and they still can't give me an answer. And I submitted more documentation right. yeah. um, because it's financial stress, because my ex completely financially ruined me, attempted to rape me, and then just, it was just a, one thing on top of the other. So the manic episode was just like a convergence of all of these bad things all at once. Um, and then it just kind of kept getting worse. But I didn't die, so, um, yeah, because feeling the knee of the police officer on my back, I yelled out. He stopped, though. I yelled out. I said, get your knees off my back. Because it was just like... Unnecessary, like, unnecessary force. Like, I'm 100... Yeah. At, the, at that time, I think I was 130-something yeah. pounds. So yeah. I just thought it was... It was just... They were upset. I could tell that they were upset. Because I... The way that I train fitness-wise is, like, I'm an athlete. Like, yeah. I train for yeah. functionality. I have a two-year-old. Like... Exactly. So, it's the fact that I was giving up a fight. And it, he didn't like it. He didn't like the fact that I was, like, defending myself. And it's like, I didn't punch anybody, but I wasn't going to let them wrestle me to the ground and just, like, yeah. <laughs> slam me in the ambulance yeah. without a fight. Yeah. I yelled like, out. I just kept yelling my name. Mm-hmm. I remember that part. Because I wanted them to know. I wanted them to know, like, look look at what, what these people are doing. <laughs> There's people sitting at the bus stop across the street. And I could I, eye to eye with this woman. And I said, look at what they're doing. But they tried to say I was running in and out of traffic. I was trying to run into traffic to get away from the police. <laughs> I was scared for my life. I yeah. thought I was going to die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. But that's why I came. I'm sorry. Oh, God. All that is just so Yeah. Oh, there's a lot to unpack there. I'm just like, oh. I'm sorry. I, like, no. I just kind of like opened no, up a hole. No, I am, I'm so glad that you came in today. And thank you for just being open and vulnerable and sharing that. I can only imagine how hard it is to talk about that and have to relive that. And yeah. So thank you for feeling comfortable enough to tell me about it. Um, mm-hmm. I will be 100% honest with you. I, I'm not really like sure what we do next. I'm going to talk to Dr. Yeah. We have a social worker through the Women's Health Clinic that may have some ideas about kind of like what, what to do next, next steps yeah. should be. Um, I'm for sure going to document like, you know, yeah. kind of a synopsis of what you told me. Um, so yeah. that, like you said, we have it in our system and our records. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm really bummed that this happened to you. Well, so. they didn't know that they did it to a filmmaker and an artist. So trust me, <laughs> this will not go quietly. <laughs> nobody, nobody deserves to be like that. They don't. Um, but does. this is America. <laughs> we have to be honest about that. Yeah. And we see it. But I think it's the visibility and the fact that they'll have to face it um, and they'll have to face how they treat vets here yeah. and black women particularly. Yes, yes. Hello. I'm like, there's so many layers like to this. Um, yeah. And so you're home now? I'm home now, Is back to normal. Is still here? No, she went back home. Okay. Um, but it was just for me having support because it it, yeah. it was because I, I don't I mean I'm a single mom like I'm, I'm yeah. trying to do it all trying yeah. to manage it all That's a lot. and with finances trying to make sure that we still have food make sure the lights are still on and yeah. housing is expensive everything's like yeah I'm telling you it, I'm yeah. telling you it's just one thing after another so having more support uh was good for that time that I needed it but she's back home and we're back to normal, thankfully. So. And you and your fr- your best friend are still like okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a we had a nice little talk afterwards, and mm-hmm. you know she kind of let me know that. I mean, I knew she just wanted me to be okay. Yeah. And I was really grateful for that. I mean, because she was my doula when I had my daughter, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we really like bonded. Yes. Um, That's so yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. She's a total sweetheart. Um, but I'm grateful that she was there because I think it probably could have went way worse. Yeah. Um, and I let her know that too. I was like, "Thank you for being there," because she was right there by my side. Even though, even even on the ground, she was right there. She was yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 "Yeah, So, thank you guys for watching. If you made it all the way, <laughs> all the way to the end of the video, um, it's much appreciated. Um, and feel free to uh, check me out on the socials. I'll put those there. Patreon, uh, Shopify. Um, if you want to send me money, 
please do send send the team money we need money to be able to make artwork and keep on making these wonderful videos um, and having real conversations 